When we started traveling full time about a year and a half ago now, one place that we wanted to go was Southeast Asia, but it intimidated us just a little <laughs> bit. And so we spent really the first almost year and a half in Europe got our feet wet, we're totally comfortable, and now we are in Southeast Asia. Yeah, we're Asia. much more experienced now, so we know what to expect and what maybe not to expect, but there are a few things we learned coming over here. There are, so we wanna share those things with you in hopes that when you're planning your trip here, I don't know, maybe we'll answer some of the questions for we're you. We're gonna make it easier for you <laughs> to do what you wanna do. You're gonna learn from our mistakes. Okay, now one of the questions we've got asked a lot is, about the visas. Now we're only covering the tourist visa here in this video and what did we have to do as US citizens to get that visa? Mm -hmm. So for each location um, it's going to vary on your passport and for a lot of the things that we're talking about here today we're going to have links down below in the description so that you can go research it yourself. So the first place that we went into was Thailand, and Thailand was easy. We arrived, there's a visa exemption for a lot of countries, right. and on arrival you get 30 days right away. Right now they're actually running, I don't know, it's not really a special, but it's, it's a special. <laughs> it's a special. It's 15 uh, days special. It's an extra 15 days, so we got 45 days on arrival, uh, and that is just till the end of March, so that's ending really soon. Okay, now for Vietnam, you will have to get a visa, and you can get that online at the Vietnam immigration site. That visa is good for 30 days, and you will need to print that off. So now that visa is called your e-visa, yes. and that visa is very simple, do it online on the actual website. Now you're gonna also find that there could be some other websites where you could go through and do it, and they're gonna offer these guarantees of the visa going through and stuff like that. You can do that if you want, it's gonna cost you more money. We ourselves did it with the e-visa and we know other people that did it that way without any issues. So that's a way to go. Another option there is, is to do a visa on arrival. Now with visa on arrival, you're still gonna go through the application process. You're still gonna pay the fee of the $25. And then you, when you get to the airport, you have a whole nother step that you wouldn't have had by just doing the e-visa process. You're going to have to go to the visa on arrival counter before you go through customs, go through showing them the letter, same thing, showing, giving them passport photos, and then paying additional fee to get a stamp onto your paperwork. So your choice, I really guess I don't see the benefit of doing yeah. the visa on arrival. Um, I, I guess maybe if you forgot to get a visa I think maybe if you forgot to get you're one right. or you didn't know you needed one, mm -hmm. but you'll know because you're watching this video, so you won't have to worry about that. Okay, when is the best time to visit Southeast Asia? Now this is something we learned and we actually changed our plan slightly because of burning season in Northern Thailand and Vietnam. Now that is when the farmers start burning their crops. You get a lot of pollution in the air, a lot of smoke, and that runs really mid-February through the end of April. So we jumped our schedule up a little bit to avoid that, and we're glad we did. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also seasonal. You get the monsoon season, which is fall typically. So I would say the best time to visit Northern Thailand and Vietnam would be in December and January. The next big question coming here is what vaccinations do you need and are any of them required? Now this is an area you're going to want to plan a little bit ahead on because some of these shots ha are in a series. So you're going to need to allow time to get multiple shots. So the shots that are listed as suggested are hepatitis A, B, hepatitis B, typhoid, and yellow fever. Now out of those ones, the only one that is actually required for certain countries that you'll be traveling from is yellow fever. Now those countries that they're more worried about those countries bringing yellow fever in, mm -hmm. not you catching yellow fever here in Southeast Asia. Okay, now there's also rabies, tetanus, diphtheria, and malaria tablets that you could also get. So now out of all of those, what did we choose to get? We got the Hep A and B. Uh, we actually got the combination Hep A B shot, which is called Twin Ricks, I believe. Uh, that one you had to get one shot. You could get another shot a month later, and then you get another shot five months after that. The nice thing about it though, we didn't have to actually plan that far ahead, right. thankfully. Um, we were able to just get the first two shots and then the the third one is really more so considered a booster if you want it to last a really long time. So we still have yet to get that other one. We're still in that time frame. Now we also got the typhoid shot and the tetanus diphtheria combination shot. Now we needed the tetanus anyway, so we just went ahead and did it. 
And these, these shots are all kind of food related. So we just wanted to make sure that, you know, we knew we were going to be eating street food, um, maybe drinking some water that we weren't used to drinking. So we went ahead and decided to go ahead and do it. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Now the shots we decided against were the yellow fever because we weren't coming from an area that was an issue. Uh, and then the other one we decided against was rabies. We were actually kind of yeah. guided to go ahead and wait on that. And if we are ever in a situation where we get scratched or we get bitten uh, by an animal while we're here to go ahead and just head to a medical facility and yeah. get a shot at that time. There's a couple of reasons behind that. The rabies shot is actually a very expensive shot to get. It's a not long lasting shot for our, from our understanding. Uh, and we also knew that we were going to be in pretty I don't know, like city areas where we would have easy access to get to a medical facility. If yep. you're gonna be out of town and you're gonna be in one of those more remote places, you may wanna go ahead and get it. It might not yeah. be worth that risk. Yeah, the other reason is it sounds like they really hurt a lot. Yeah. So I didn't wanna get it for that reason alone. <laughs> okay, the next thing we chose not to do was take the malaria tablets. Now, malaria, you're only gonna catch that if you go into the jungles, uh, up rivers and such. The tablets themselves are expensive. You've got to take them for like a week ahead of time, during and a week after. And we just decided that we weren't going to be going to any of those places where we might catch malaria. Mm -hmm. So we decided again. So they can also make you nauseated and a little sick. Yeah, we had really heard that a yeah. lot of people got sick from taking them. And that wouldn't be a reason not to take them if we were going to a high risk mm -hmm. area. We would, <laughs> he may not choose yeah. to. I'll choose to take them if we, if we ever do choose to go to those remote areas where it is uh, something that we would have as a higher risk level. Okay, what you need to bring with you, what not to forget. Now the plugins over here are slightly different. You can use your standard plug-in without the three prongs. So if you've got a three prong plug-in for your laptop, you'll need a converter. You'll also need uh, your hair dryer and your straightener, which Carrie has. Mm -hmm. I left mine at home. Um, you'll need uh, a dual voltage on those as well. Right, yeah. So, I mean, we just go ahead and carry our adapter with right. us. And I had done a lot of research prior to coming of which adapter things we may need because we do travel to multiple different countries. We have needed to take them out at a couple places. So I would say you'd probably need it, but we've been surprised at how many places we could just plug just our plug, plug in right, right in. in. Our phone yep. plugs right in. The other thing is, is what clothing do you need to bring with you? Uh, the nice thing is, is there are markets everywhere. You can get clothes for super inexpensive. Yeah. We've actually been shocked by the quality of the clothing. Um, I kind of expected everything to seem like when you touch it to right. feel pretty cheap. But you can get a North Face pretty... jacket for 20 bucks. <laughs> right. So I might yeah. get more you, we, Fortunately, we don't need it because it's really warm. Anyways, you don't need to bring a whole lot with you. The one thing that you do want to bring with you though is you are going to be visiting temples. Yeah. Your shoulders need to be covered. Your knees need to be covered. Uh, if you don't bring something to cover those areas, no worries. They have something for you to buy actually right there at the temple. Yeah. Or they have something for you to borrow right yeah, there. You can even temple. borrow. You didn't have to buy. Yeah. yeah. You got elephant pants. I, I did buy elephant yeah. pants for $3. So. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad price. I look good in those elephant they, they pants. They look great. Too. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing, which was kind of surprising, and I had heard about it previous to coming, so I was very thankful for that, is if you have any facial products that you use, any kind of lotion that you use, even just body lotion or anything like that, in Thailand, really majority have whitening elements added in the sunscreen, it's in all the body lotions, it's in all the face lotions. So if that's something you wanna stay away from, you're gonna to wanna to pack that in your bag. Now being in Vietnam, I haven't seen that as much. So I would maybe it's the case, I just haven't seen it, but boy, you really saw it in yeah. Thailand. Okay, getting here, getting to Southeast Asia. Now there's a number of different ways you can get here. We chose to fly. Quickest, Probably easiest fastest. way, yeah, the best way. We came from Seattle to Tokyo, which was ten and a half hours, and from Tokyo to Bangkok, which was another seven and a half hours. Now we were pleasantly surprised flying into Tokyo. We were able to just change gates, didn't have to go through any kind of customs or any uh, security checks or anything. Even though it was an international flight, we were still able just to walk right to our gate, which was something that we we weren't used to in Europe. We had to stop every five minutes it seemed like it seemed like so we did we did schedule for a layover in Tokyo for that reason and we didn't need it and then we flew into Bangkok and in Bangkok a uh, couple things we had heard that you needed to have an onward flight 
to yes. show them when you're going through custom. So we had that prepped and ready. We also had our uh, where we were going to be staying information printed off because, once again, we had kind of heard that you needed that. Right. And we didn't have to show either of those. Now, that's not saying that you may not need to show those because that's a pretty common thing. Yeah. So you may just want to have it and be prepped and ready. Otherwise just have you... it be ready because it all depends on the agent. Right. Or you, yeah. yeah, you might all of a sudden be buying a last minute flight just to show them that you have one. Uh, the other thing, which was totally new to us, we had never had to do before, is at the customs counter, they ask you for your boarding pass. Now we saw numerous people in front of us when yeah. they were asked, they didn't have their boarding pass because that's kind of one of those things as soon as yeah. you get on the plane, you tuck, you tuck it, it in yeah. the back seat pocket you need it. and you don't need it again. Uh, you need that. So have yeah. that with your passport because you'll have to show that to them. Which is kind of crazy to me. How else were you supposed to get to the airport without getting off an airplane? But we don't know the reason. I don't why. ask questions. If, if you know the reason why they need yeah. the boarding pass, please put it down below yeah. because we're kind of curious to know ourselves. All right, phone plans. So if you're not bringing your phone plan from home, you're going to need a SIM card. And we typically wait to get our SIM card, which is what we did when we arrived in Bangkok. We waited, we got to our Airbnb because we're kind of used to having the locations to get a SIM card all over the place. Like you don't have to search too hard. We get there and it took a couple days really before we finally just went further into town and went to a mall to get our SIM card. Right. And so that was fine. It worked out okay. Um, you will need your passport when you're getting a SIM card in Thailand. So learning our lesson from that, mm -hmm. when we flew into Vietnam, and this is where you want to listen, learning from our mistake, we flew into Vietnam, we got through customs, we went downstairs, and there is a SIM card booth right there waiting for us. It took five minutes, they plugged our SIM cards in, we were done, paid, and we were ready to go. Yeah, it was a super yeah. easy process, no passport needed. Now transportation, how are you going to get around when you get there? There's always the option of renting a scooter. I wouldn't highly recommend this when you first get into the big cities. They're chaotic, they're crazy, and that would not be where I would want my first experience right. to be on a scooter. Now if you choose to do the scooter route, you are going to need to have an international driver's license, and you're going to want to make sure you have travel insurance because it looks a little dangerous as yeah, far as I, I can tell. I wouldn't do it. I yeah. mean, I've never been on a scooter before either, but I still wouldn't. <laughs> right. And <laughs> the other thing to kind of note with the scooters is there are stop points. So when we say that you need your international driver's license, yeah. that's just not a formality that you need to show them. There are stop points and they are looking for tourists and you probably will be stopped on your scooter and asked for the information. When you get into Bangkok, they have the BTS, which is the SkyTrain, and they have the MRT, which is the subway system. And they were both so easy to Very navigate. Easy to use. Yeah. yeah. We we just kind of made ourselves jump into it really fast and learn the system really quickly. And we were so happy we did because that's how we got around town and it was really affordable too. And that's another thing we've learned uh, through our last year and a half of travels. Just jump in and do it because it's usually really easy and you're gonna be glad that you did. Okay, now in Thailand you can use Grab, Bolt, or InDrive. You can get those three apps. I download them before you get here. They're really easy to use. There's Grab everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you can use those. You can jump on a tuk-tuk. They also, in Northern Thailand, in Chiang Mai, they have the red trucks that you can jump on the back of. You just jump in, the driver will eventually get out, ask you where you're going. It costs like 30 baht, which is a couple dollars max. I think it's a dollar. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's really easy to get around. Mm -hmm. Um, you won't have any problems with that at all. Right. Now, if you do decide to use the tuk-tuk or you do decide to use a taxi, make sure you're negotiating your price before right. you get in because uh, you're at their mercy as soon as you get in there and they take you somewhere. So that's kind of why we yeah. always stuck with a grab because we knew the price going in. So we've I also, like that. yeah, we've also gotten to the point where we've, we've looked up the price on grab mm -hmm. and then negotiated the price with the taxi guy that's just standing there waiting for right. us to jump in. So we can just say, hey, look, this is how much it costs. Mm -hmm. He says, great, let's go. Right, they're not as yeah. they're not as uh, quickly to go, no, 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 if they see what, what you could just get it for. So right. that's an easy way to do it. Now, when you're in Vietnam, your, your options are a little more limited. What we have found is that they use Grab. Mm -hmm. They don't use Bolt or we haven't found another app that they use. Uh, and they do have the taxis and same thing. We've used the taxi service once again by showing them what we could get it for on right. Grab and then we go ahead and hop in the taxi and that has worked out okay. And, and you know, to negotiate the price, 
Uh, we're talking about a few cents. Mm -hmm. We're really not talking about getting ripped off for, for mm -hmm. tens of dollars. Uh, they're very inexpensive and they're very easy. Now when you are actually in either Thailand say, or Vietnam and you need to move about, you can take the hopper flights. Unfortunately, they're incredibly in inexpensive. But one of the things that we had heard prior to coming is you are going to have issues with your baggage. You're gonna to have to check if they have super stringent levels of like how, what your weight can be going in. I mean, it's actually ridiculous levels. Like they will say seven kilograms for both of your bags if they do allow two bags. I don't even yeah. know how that's possible. I don't know how that's possible. We went ahead and we just took our first flight with Air Asia and risked not checking mm -hmm. our bag. We had our carry-on. We both had our uh, bag that went under the seat as well and get to the gate and you're kind of waiting, waiting, waiting. We had no problem, no problem at all. They were actually asking people really kindly, like, could I check your bag for you? And I just said, no, thank you. And uh, check your bag to weigh it. Check it to check it. Yeah. So they didn't even really ask about weight no. or size. No, but they do have the sign sitting right there yeah. that like super strict, here's the baggage allowance. But we watched everybody in that line get on with similar baggage as us with no issue. And we had plenty of room. Right, we had plenty of room. And so we kind of wondered, was that a fluke? We flew Air Asia again, had the exact same experience, yep. weren't asked a question. Then coming to uh, now in Vietnam, we flew on Vietnam Airlines. We did choose to check our baggage simply because it was included in our ticket and we didn't want to hassle. So we went ahead and checked it, but we kind of paid attention exactly. to the other people around <laughs> us and what they were taking on. Same experience. Yep. They we, took didn't, their we didn't need to. We didn't need to. But we did anyway, and it worked out just fine for us. Uh, now we use the away smaller or the away larger carry on mm -hmm. luggage, yeah. carry on only. So we do this all over the world. We've never had a problem with our right. luggage. We assumed we would here in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. We have not. Not to this point. We know plenty of people who nope. have had have the issue. Problems. So we know at some point we're going to be forced to check our bags. Okay, our accommodations, where do we stay? How do we find them? How do we do the research on it? We just stay in Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we go, we stay in Airbnbs. Now we do occasionally stay at a hotel when we just have a short stay like we did in Hanoi. We do that through bookings.com. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very, now we have heard of people arriving, staying for the first few days and searching out a rental at a good price, cheaper than you might get an Airbnb. But to us, that's kind of a hassle. We like to get here, get settled mm -hmm. and start our time. Right. It just saves all that. We don't have to like negotiate and yeah, paperwork. Just less and headache. Like that. If you're staying for maybe six months or something, I can yeah. see absolutely doing something like that. Now, currency. What currency do they use? So in Thailand, it's the Thai baht. And for every one dollar, it is about 34 Thai baht. And then in yeah. <laughs> Vietnam, for every one dollar, it's about 24,000 Vietnamese dong. Right. So two million dong isn't that much no it's not yeah. it's really weird to like go pay for things in the you know hundred thousand yeah so you will have to do some math when you get here there are apps there's some conversions you can use makes it a lot easier now you will have to use cash mm -hmm. street vendors small shops souvenir shops they'll want cash you can also use a bank card to withdraw that cash, it's very easy. Make sure you get a card that reimburses your international uh, ATM fees. Mm -hmm. We use Charles Schwab, so at the end of each month, we get reimbursed for those fees. You can also use your credit card, Visa, MasterCard are used just about everywhere outside of those vendors. Right, I mean, grocery stores. Yes. And then if we've gone to more of a, a larger restaurant, but any of your street vendors or at the markets or anything like that, you're- They want cash. They want cash. Yeah. Now language, have we had any issues with communication while being here? So in Thailand, both in the bigger city and well really Chiang Mai and Bangkok are both bigger cities, right. we had no issue with communication. Uh, really for the most part, everything, there was English widely spoken. Uh, if there was any kind of communication sure. issue, they were fantastic at really helping trying yep. to understand what you were saying. Uh, and one of the nice things was is on the menus, there was typically a picture. So you could just yeah. see what you were having and point at it. <laughs> um, and then in Vietnam, we've noticed a little bit more of a language barrier, but not a lot. Um, when we were in 
uh, Hanoi, we really didn't have any yeah, issue. It was very right. widely right. spoken. And then on our cruise in Halong Bay, no issues at all, English widely spoken. Uh, but now being in Da Nang, we're noticing a little bit more of a language barrier. But once again, super kind about it. Uh, and so no issues yeah. at all. The young man that cut my hair yesterday, I didn't speak, a, speak any English at all. And, <laughs> and he did a great he job. He did a great job, so, yeah. So you can, you can get by with a smile. Right. Uh, and, and everybody seems to understand thank you. Yes. So. Uh, the one suggestion we would make and something that we do use all the time is Google Translate yeah. because when you do have a menu in front of you that has no English on it and let's face it, there's like no way you're going to figure out some of the writing, uh, you can just hold it over the top and in picture mode and it will just translate it over to English for you so you can read the menu. So that has been a big help anywhere we've traveled. Yes. Okay, the food. Now, I think Southeast Asia, Thailand especially, when you talk about coming here, uh, the first thing you think about is all the glorious beaches. The second thing you talk about is all the food you're going to eat. Now, Thailand is one huge food court. You can get food anywhere you want, anywhere you need it, on any street, and it's fantastic. But there are some concerns. Use common sense when, when you go to a, a food drip vendor, a truck, uh, street food. Um, we tend to go to the ones that are most populated. Uh, and we haven't had any problems since we've been here at all. They cook the food right in front of you, it's fresh. Now, we have had some great questions about vegetarian food, um, cross-contamination if you're allergic to shellfish, uh, peanut allergies. We would say all those things would be a concern with the exception if you're vegetarian. If you're vegetarian, you got it made. You are not gonna go hungry here in no. Southeast Asia. Plenty of options. But the rest of you that have any kind of food allergies, take precautions and use common sense. I think the seafood one would be the yes. easiest to avoid because you could go to a street vendor that just really doesn't serve any seafood. But the peanut one might be a little more challenging because it seems to be very common yes. in a lot of the dishes. So That question just came up here recently, so it's something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. And now if you are somebody who is just kind of over the top concerned and about navigating the street food scene, there is an option when you're in the bigger cities, some of the bigger malls, they have the food court, which when you go into it, it is like, it's not little street carts, but they're just little stalls, and they each of them serve just a couple dishes. Yeah. The pricing is about the same as what you're going to pay at the street carts, but you're kind of in a very controlled, really clean setting. Yeah, it'd be just like the food court and mall back mm -hmm. home. Yeah. Right, so you're just gonna be able to maybe Try some of those dishes that you are not familiar with. Um, and I don't know, it's a little bit harder when you're walking street cart to street cart to street cart yeah. and trying to figure it out. When you're in the mall, you can kind of walk around and just take your time. Now in Thailand, if you don't like spicy food, you might want to do the mall option to start mm -hmm. with because you can add your own spices. Out in the street, um, you know, back in the United States, you get one star or five stars. That's what you tell your waitress when you go out for mm -hmm. Thai food. There's no star system here. You get what you get. And sometimes it's a six or seven star. Yeah. I'll be honest. It's way there hotter than There are a couple times I couldn't finish. Yeah. But uh, just be aware of that too. If you don't like spicy food, um, it's just something to think about. Yeah. In general, Thailand, uh, we found that majority of the food is spicy. That's just the way I think they cook. Yeah. Uh, now coming to Vietnam, the food we have found is not spicy at all. Um, and, you know, we kind of miss some of the spice. Equally as fantastic. Yes. Just not as spicy. Just not as spicy. Yes. Yeah. Very good food. Now, if you don't want to do the street food scene and you want to be able to cook in, there are grocery stores. They're a little bit harder to come by. Um, in Thailand, we we had a couple of grocery stores around us that were nice grocery stores. You are going to pay considerably more for groceries to cook in than what it would cost you to eat out. So I think that's why the street food scene is so huge is it's a lot cheaper to just go out for street food. But we did buy in for our breakfast things we had yogurt and stuff like that so uh, that is an option some great snacks at the 7-elevens mm -hmm. um, now they have like ramen galore where it just <laughs> seems to be so much better than what we have back home even when it comes pre-packaged mm -hmm. so we did some of that now in Vietnam you do not have the 7-elevens in the convenience stores on every corner like you do in Thailand uh, they are available what about drinking water can you drink the water no you cannot 
So you're not going to drink the water in Vietnam and you're not going to drink the water in Thailand. Uh, you're going to be buying bottled water. We have been totally fine brushing our teeth with the water. We use the water also to make our instant coffee because coffee's just not a thing in the house here. So you have instant. Right. Uh, but we just boil it in our hot pot and make sure we've kind of let it boil for a little bit. And then we've used that without issue. But otherwise you will be buying your water. Uh, Pricing isn't bad though. For a 1.5 liter, it is averaged about 40 cents. 40 cents is a pretty good deal for mm -hmm. fresh water. Okay, and the other thing that we like to drink is beer. Mm -hmm. The water's cheap. The beer in Thailand was not. You could get the local beer for a reasonable price, but the craft beer that they're making in Thailand was way too expensive for us. Mm -hmm. We're talking about seven to eight US dollars a pint or higher. Mm -hmm. So we did not get into the craft beer in Thailand for that reason. Now here in Vietnam, <laughs> we're finding some terrific craft beer at a great price. So we're very excited about that. We'll bring some of that to you, yeah. but not as much as we would like to because I personally have stopped drinking beer until for now. the moment. Yeah, until, until, now. until we got to Vietnam. Yeah, I was going to say, we actually did fantastic in uh, Thailand. We thought we were doing great at just cutting back on beer like we intentionally were doing it. I think we were just trying to save money. We were trying to save money. <laughs> now that now we're in the, in the land of the cheap beer, yeah. uh, we're enjoying it again. So we'll bring you some uh, craft beer updates here mm -hmm. coming soon. Now the bathroom scene in Thailand and in Vietnam. It's a little bit different. Uh, one thing that we were happy to see in comparison to say being in Europe where it was really challenging to find a public restroom, you can find public restrooms yeah. here. You may have to pay for them, which we never mind doing anymore because we're just happy when we find them. They're really affordable to use. I mean, super inexpensive. Uh, but the one thing I'm going to note to you is to be aware of. Carry some tissue in your bag because <laughs> just because you found a bathroom, very often there is no toilet paper for you. So, and there's a couple things about there, you'll see a sign on the door. One will say like European bathroom and the other says Thai bathroom. And that will be a squat toilet. So yeah. you're actually just standing over a hole in the ground. So gotta get used to that as well. I prefer the European bathroom. <laughs> it's myself. not always an option yes. though. Sometimes you just get that squat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question we get asked all the time is healthcare. What's healthcare like? Well, I'll tell you in Thailand, the healthcare system is fantastic. We did a recent video on our healthcare experience. You can check that video out if you'd like mm -hmm. to. But we found healthcare all over the place from dental to vision um, to the procedures that we had done. And it was very accessible and very affordable. Right. Now here in Vietnam, we haven't found that as much right. or if at all. I don't think they have the package deals here in Vietnam mm -hmm. that they have in Thailand. Yeah, so I went on to uh, the hospital mm -hmm. site here in Vietnam just out of curiosity because it was so easy to find in Thailand. You went to the hospital site and boom, it comes up as like medical package that you could just purchase. Right. I couldn't even <clears throat> find it on the website. So if it is available, it's not easy to find. Um, but like Brian was saying, the interesting thing is, is just walking around town, we hadn't even found, like walked by a dentist office or right. walked by, and it's not that they don't have them, because I've Googled and I've found, because I always kind of like to know where I'm gonna go if I need a dentist. I don't want to be last minute when I'm in pain, like searching for that. Right. They are around, they're just not as accessible. Now the final thing is safety. We have felt incredibly safe yeah. in both Thailand and in Vietnam. We've been out at night, um, honestly, we have just found it comes down to wherever you're traveling for the most part, common sense. Common Use sense. common sense. Yeah. If you are in a really busy market setting, wear your backpack on the front of you, or we use the little shoulder pouches that come around right. the front of us. Your stuff is right here and protected. Um, you know. I don't know, just use your, use your, your Use brain. your head. Just use, use your, your head. head. Be smart. Just be aware. Yeah, yeah, just be aware. But we have felt incredibly safe here in all situations. There hasn't been one time that we've felt uncomfortable. So we have just started our five months adventure here in Southeast Asia. So make sure and hit the subscribe button so that you can follow us along on our journey through this area. And if there's any place that you would like us to see or suggest for us to see, Absolutely. put that in the comments. Because Absolutely. yeah, we yep. kind of, we have a little bit of it planned out, but we haven't planned out all of our travels here yet. Let us know, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. I'm gonna start that over because I kind of shot that all out. Yeah. Bring it up, B. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I was dancing. Right. There.